Street Hill Tavern people, keep running. Keep running. No matter what you're going through, just keep running. Keep running. No matter your circumstance, keep on. Keep on running. Keep running. Keep running. Oh, keep running. Keep running on, on and on. Keep running. 
thank you to Terrell Martin and the C2 Mass Choir and the 101st Army Band. As a courtesy, we request you to silence all phones and electronic devices prior to today's ceremony, which begins at 11 a.m. Distinguished guests, now being seated, the honorable members of the 74th General Assembly of the Colorado State Legislature, escorted by the cadets of the Colorado Wing of the Civil Air Patrol, Colorado's Mountain View Young Marines, and the Sergeants at Arms. And a green coach supposed to figure that out. Distinguished guests, now being seated are the justices of the Colorado Supreme Court. Chief Justice Brian D. Boatwright, Justice Monica M. Marquez, Justice William W. Hood III, Justice Richard L. Gabriel, Justice Melissa Hart, Justice Carlos A. Samore, Jr., 
and Justice Maria E. Birkenkotter. Distinguished guests, now being seated are members of the Governor's Cabinet, the command staff of our Colorado National Guard, the Gold Star Wives of Colorado, the Executive Command of the Colorado State Patrol, and the Command of the Colorado Wing of the Civil Air Patrol. Well, we writ.
Distinguished guests, now being seated are members of tribal leadership from the Ute Mountain Ute Tribe and Southern Ute Indian Tribe. From the Ute Mountain Ute Tribe, Chairman Manuel Hart. And from the Southern Ute Indian Tribe, Chairman Melvin J. Baker from the Southern Ute Indian Tribe. Now being seated are Reverend Dr. James D. Peters, Jr. of New Hope Baptist Church and Rabbi Tirza Firestone of Congregation Neve Kodesh. Distinguished guests, now being seated are the chairs of the 2023 Colorado for All Inaugural Committee. Distinguished guests, now being seated are representatives and former members of our congressional delegation. U.S. Senator Michael Bennett, <laughs> former U.S. Representative Ed Perlmutter and his wife, Nancy Perlmutter. Distinguished guests, again, and as a courtesy, we request you to silence all phones and electronic devices. Distinguished guests, now being seated are Colorado's former governors, Governor and current U.S. Senator John Hickenlooper. <laughs> Governor Bill Ritter. Governor Bill Owens. Dottie Lamb, representing the late Governor Dick Lamb and former State Senator Chris Romer, representing Governor Roy Romer. Distinguished guests, now being seated from the 74th General Assembly of the Colorado State Legislature, 
the Honorable Senate President Stephen Fenberg and the Honorable Speaker of the House Julie McCluskey. Distinguished guests, now being seated are Colorado Attorney General Phil Weiser and Dr. Heidi Wald, Colorado State Treasurer Dave Young and State Representative Mary Young, and Colorado Secretary of State Jenna Griswold and Mario Cañedo. Distinguished guests, welcome to the 2023 Colorado for All inauguration ceremony. As a courtesy, we request you to silence all phones and electronic devices for the duration of today's event. To start today's ceremony, please welcome to the stage Senate President Stephen Fenberg. Good morning, and welcome to this historic and beautiful day in Colorado. I am so honored to join you all today for the inauguration of Governor Jared Polis. My name is Steve Fenberg, and I have the privilege of serving as the president of the Colorado Senate. But my real claim to fame is that I'm Jared Polis' state senator you would not believe the emails I get from this constituent. <laughs> In all seriousness though, today is a time to celebrate our accomplishments and more importantly, to look boldly forward towards Colorado's future. But we are also gathered here this morning in the wake of some, some difficult years. Colorado has been thrown some serious curveballs and some real challenges since we last gathered on these steps four years ago devastating wildfires, a global pandemic, political rhetoric that at times has led to violence, gun violence that has continued to take innocent lives way too soon. We have had to lean on each other and uplift one another in ways we never knew previously. But the fact that we can convene here today with a level of normalcy, a sense of safety, in the context of having one of the strongest economies in the country, it is nothing short of amazing, and we should all be incredibly grateful. But our good fortune is no accident. It's due in large part to the leadership of Governor Jared Polis and his administration. The voters of Colorado have clearly noticed this as well. And so has the wind. <laughs> the voters have made it abundantly clear. Continue down the path of governing responsibly, 
continue the good work that has been started and move Colorado boldly forward for all. As someone who has served in the legislature for the entirety of the first Polis administration, I can say that it has been inspiring to have a partner in the governor's office that each and every day works towards improving the lives of everyone in this great state. Together, we've spent the last four years transforming Colorado from once in a generation investments in creating housing that Colorado families can afford to overhauling and improving our state's behavioral health system to the implementation of free universal kindergarten and preschool. to enshrining the fundamental right to reproductive health care in Colorado law. We have been busy moving Colorado forward. But if I know Jared, he's just getting started. And those of us in the legislature are excited to be right there with him along the way. This year, we have big plans to keep our state moving in the right direction plans to build on our progress and make sure Colorado remains the very best state to live, raise a family, and do business in. We are prepared to overcome Colorado's toughest challenges by creating communities that are affordable for all by cutting red tape to build more housing faster and lowering the cost of quality health care, making safer, healthier, and happier communities by addressing crime at its root and reducing the plague of gun violence helping students thrive through continued investment in public schools and the teacher workforce, and tackling existential threats such as rapidly changing uh, climate, attacks on our democracy, and our basic human rights. We are going to be busy, but my colleagues and I are eager to carry the mantle and face these challenges head on with Governor Polis. Because last November, the people of Colorado entrusted us to do just that. Last November, the people of Colorado chose progress. They chose democracy. They chose freedom. They chose a bright future for Colorado. And working hand in hand with Governor Polis, I am so looking forward to building that future together. Thank you. Distinguished guests, Please welcome to the stage House Speaker Julie McCluskey. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, one and all, to our state capitol. What an exciting day. I am so proud to join you for the inauguration of Governor Jared Polis. Not only am I the first woman speaker from the Western Slope, I also have the privilege of representing some of the finest ski areas in all of North America. Yes, glad to see skiers and snowboarders out there. We are so happy to have a proud booster of our ski areas in our governor. And while I know this, this will be a year that we tackle a great many serious challenges together, I hope it is also the year that you and I will finally get to ski together. Uh, in my district, of course, but I promise the governor I won't make him skin up the mountain first. The last four years have seen us make tremendous progress. Under Governor Polis's leadership, we've passed legislation to address some of the most pressing needs in our communities. Our expanded democratic majority is recognition that Coloradans agree with the path we've charted. I'm honored to lead the most diverse legislature in our state's history. For the first time, the House is led by three women. We have been proud to work alongside Governor Polis to advance important priorities for families and women that have helped more hardworking people in our state reach their dreams. By uplifting the voices of women, we have secured the fundamental right to an abortion and reproductive health care. We have increased access to child care, made health care more available to pregnant women, young children, and new mothers. We expanded financial assistance to families and boosted Colorado's child tax credit. 
Starting this fall, every four-year-old in Colorado will have access to universal preschool. More parents will be able to get back to work and families across the state will save money on one of the largest expenses in their budgets. And everywhere we look, education is the fertile ground, the incubator from which the Colorado dream grows. I've spent a significant amount of my time working in, sco in schools, public schools, and to this day I am passionate about ensuring that every child receives a world-class world class education that prepares them to live their own Colorado dream. Thanks to the work of Governor Polis and so many others, we've put record funding into our public schools. This year, school districts in Colorado are seeing nearly $550 more per student on average. And our focus on families has led to prioritize access to affordable health care and to building healthier communities. Soon after I was elected, Governor Polis and I started discussions about what would eventually become one of the most successful efforts in Colorado to drive down the cost of health care. Together we passed reinsurance, which lowered the cost of premiums by 24% over what we'd done last year. In parts of our state, the western slope, with persistently high health care costs, premiums were 36% lower than they would have been if the law had not been passed. And as we work to build healthier communities, we must also ensure the health of our environment. It is an honor that the voters have entrusted us once again with the stewardship of our public lands as we seek to uphold our responsibility to protect the Colorado way of life. We've invested record funding to meet our climate challenges, improve our air, and prevent devastating wildfires. And this year, we will continue our work to protect our environment and our communities from those ongoing devastating impacts of climate change. I am so excited that the governor has made water a big focus of his budget. Every person, every person and family in our state depends on water. And while we don't have nearly as much as we used to, the demands on water are ever increasing. I know that this year water issues will, will unite us, not divide us, and that we will boldly secure our water future together. Through difficult times and unprecedented challenges, Governor Polis has guided Colorado with a steady hand. Under his leadership, Colorado fared far better than other states in nearly every major category through the pandemic, and we've come out with an economy that is roaring back. What makes Governor Polis so special is his ability to see what lies ahead and set Colorado on a course to get us where we need to go. His innovative approaches and willingness to do the hard work have led to transformational changes in meeting his bold goals for our state. I know that our Colorado spirit, as resilient as the rugged mountains behind you, will continue to lead us forward, forward, and I'm excited for the bright future that lies ahead under our governor's leadership. Thank you, Governor Polis, for your partnership and your leadership, and thank you, Colorado, for the faith you've put in all of us. <laughs> Distinguished guests, I now call forth the Legislative Escort Committee for the Honorable Lieutenant Governor Diane Primavera. The Honorable Members Escorting Lieutenant Governor Primavera are Monica Duran, House Majority Leader, Paul Lundin, Senate Minority Leader, Rose Puglisi, Assistant House Minority Leader, and Brianna Titone. House Co-Caucus Chair. <laughs> Distinguished guests, please welcome Lieutenant Governor Diane Primavera and her daughters Kelsey and Darcy Magnuson.
Distinguished guests, I now call forth the Legislative Escort Committee for the Honorable Governor, Jared S. Polis. The honorable members escorting Governor Polis are Dominic Moreno, Senate Majority Leader, Mike Lynch, House Minority Leader, Janet Buckner, Senate Caucus Chair, and Bob Gardner, Assistant Senate Minority Leader. <laughs> Distinguished guests, please welcome Governor Jared S. Polis, Marlon Reese, Susan Polis Schutz and Steve Schutz. Distinguished guests, it is our great pleasure to introduce our next musical performance. Throughout its 41-year history, the Rocky Mountain Arts Association, which manages the Denver Gay Men's Chorus, has maintained a passionate commitment to the lives and well-being of LGBTQIA individuals through its mission of building community through music. Out Loud Colorado Springs Men's Chorus inspires solidarity with the LGBTQ plus community and is a force for celebrating our collective humanity through song. Please welcome the Denver Gay Men's Chorus and the Out Loud Colorado Springs Men's Chorus, directed by Dr. Raul Dominguez. of Colors by the Combined Colorado National Guard, Colorado State Patrol Color Guard, and the singing of the National Anthem by the Denver Gay Men's Chorus and Out Loud Colorado Springs Men's Chorus. Thank you. 
Color guard. Post. Color guard. Color. Thank you to the Rocky Mountain Arts Association's Denver Gay Men's Chorus and Out Loud Colorado Springs Men's Chorus. Distinguished guests, please be seated. I would now like to welcome Reverend Dr. James D. Peters, Jr. of New Hope Baptist Church of Denver for our invocation. Good afternoon, a late good morning. It's a pleasure to be here again this year. I was here four years ago, and something must have gone well. <laughs> because the governor is back, and I'm still here again. I'm not making any plans for four years from now since I will be 90 next week. <laughs> but Governor, I'm willing if you want me and I'm around. <laughs> Governor Jared Polis, congratulations on your exciting second inauguration as governor of the great state of Colorado. Today we lift up your support staff who share this honor with you and to your associate assistant, Diane Primavera, who was introduced a few years, uh, moments ago, and honors to your family, and includes your husband who stands by your side, and to your other family members. <laughs> family members mean so very much when you're in public life and you need close, close personal support when the press and the public will watch you every move. Would the family please stand? Are they where people can see them if they stand? All of the family, please. We honor you and we appreciate you and we thank God what you have meant to our state. Today is also the inauguration of your support staff. Today is the day when we honor all of those who served with you, Governor. All support staff, please stand. You hear <laughs> Attorney General Phil Weiser has gained a lot of praise, and the Secretary of State, Gene Griswold, and David Young, and the others, any of the others permanent staff, please stand. This is your inauguration day, too, and I wanted to mention that. But I think it's important to be clear about this, that, Governor, you are the armor bearer, and all everything falls on you. 
When they look good, it makes you look good. But Governor, you are the top of the ticket. You named and supported all of them. And you all rise together when you look good. You become an important part of the ticket. Governor, you've cared about our safety as a nation and as a state. You've cared about poor people and homeless people and property right values. You have uh, delivered the biggest property stack tax court, excuse me, tax cut for people and small businesses in Colorado history. And you produced income tax cuts for many. Governor, you make things for those who live in brand new communities and for those who lost their whole community and for those who are poor and harmless. I'm happy to say that he is my governor. <laughs> who is the governor who really cares more about whole day into Kendrick and universal preschool. Most of these educational programs are, started in, are starting in Colorado next year, and our governor is the one that did it. Kids, kids anxious to start school don't vote and pay taxes, but their parents, their grandparents, their aunties and uncles do vote and do pay taxes. Our governor has been promoting early education education since he was in the United States Congress. This is one of the things that we all know, that we all know that he cares about. Give him a hand for that. You know, being brutally honest, I would like to see him make some of what he believes about early childhood education work for our whole country. I have watched as the federal government has taken people who are doing a great job where they are in state government to work for the federal government. But let me warn you, he is our governor. So my message to Washington is back off. <laughs> Don't try to steal our governor. We want him here for many, many more years right here in Colorado. I close with this paraphrase of the impossible dream from the stage production Man of La Mancha. I've used this quotation many times before. I was Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s aide in Colorado and in Connecticut, and in Connecticut I spoke for his final funeral at, uh, at the city hall for the whole city. I've never used this paraphrase for anyone but Martin. But he's been gone for a while, and I think that our governor so deserves it. So hear this quotation, a quotation from The Impossible Dream. He fought the impossible dream. He fought the unbeatable foe. To bear with unbearable sorrow to run where the brave dare not go to right the unrightable wrong, to love pure and chaste from afar, to try when your arms are too weary to reach the unreachable star. Yet this is his quest, to follow that star, no, how hope, no matter how hopeless, no matter how far, to strive for the right without question or pause, to be willing to march into hell for a heavenly cause. And I know that he is true to this glorious quest, that his heart does lie peaceful and calm now that he's been reelected, and America and Colorado and Aurora and Denver and even Colorado Springs are better for this. And don't forget the Western Stroke, that everybody around who has been touched by what he has done that this man, scorned and covered with scars, still strove with his last ounce of courage to reach the unreachable star. God bless you, Governor.
Thank you. Distinguished guests, we are honored to welcome Chairman Manuel Hart of the Ute Mountain Ute Tribe who will deliver a traditional Ute blessing. Good morning, everyone. Isn't this a beautiful day? Beautiful day in the mountains. Today I come honored to ask to do the prayer today. But first of all, before I do the prayer, I'd like to recognize Chairman Baker. He is the chairman of the Southern Ute Indian Tribe. Myself, I'm the chairman of the Ute Mound Ute Indian Tribe. I have one council member that came here with me Councilman Conrad Jacket, and our flag flies behind me as a sovereign nation. Today, as the two chairmen and Governor Polis on this historical day come as one, come as three sovereign nations on this very day, a historical day for all of us. Behind us is these mountains. These mountains were the aboriginal lands of the Ute people. Two-thirds the state of Colorado, all the way over to Salt Lake and in northern New Mexico. This was the lands of the Ute people. We were many. We were proud. We were a nomadic tribe and we roamed these mountains as a nomadic tribe. There's a lot of areas, roads, communities, identifying areas of the Ute people. But around us was other tribes too. And they too will be recognized in my prayer as we start to look forward in a joint effort of working together as sovereign nations. There are 574 federally recognized tribes in this country. Each one of them, a country within a country. And they each have a government that they have to respectfully take care of their own people as sovereign nations. So today, I would like to start off my prayer in the four directions that we recognize, but we also recognize sky and underneath what we walk on, Mother Earth. I'll do my prayer in my own language, and I'd like to ask after that part, a little portion to bless Governor Polis on this historical day. We have many leaders from the past, and we must not forget our past. All the challenges and struggles that we have faced, we have past governors, we have current senators, congressmen, past and present, and we look forward to the challenges. Yes, the last four years was a very challenging time, especially with COVID and what's happening today with all these shootings that are going on. And it's killing and taking away some of our children that are supposed to have a full life. So my prayers, I pray for that too. But I also pray for Ukraine and Russia that we will one day have world peace for all of us. There are many, many leaders across this world, across this country, across this state, and we all need to have that same forethought of what are we gonna do for the people. We as leaders, leaders as elected official, are elected by the people to work for the people, to make things better for each and every one of us. So bear with me as I start my prayer. You can stand if you wish. If you wish to sit down, that's fine. But I too will pray for each and every one of you. So bear with me. Mertavati, 
Creator, thank you for this day, this time of the month, as we pray. We bring everything to you that things will be good for each and every one of us. As we look toward the mountains, these mountains is the head gates of all the things that are going down river. The water, water is life. Water brings life to everything. Your children and all your creations, Creator. The winged ones, the feathers I use, the four-legged that gives us strength, but also gives us food on our table. The ones that live in the water that also provide strength and give us food. Creator, this land that we live on, Mother Earth, that provides us many things medicinal, many things on the food and our homes, our land. All these things, Creator, Thank you for all these things you've given us, the many blessings. I ask that you bless each and every one their homes today, their family, their children, their extended family from far and near. Creator, I ask these in the four directions, the, the sunrise, the warmth toward the equator, the sunset, the north to the cold, what we walk on on Mother Earth, the air we breathe in the air, that things will be good for all of us as we work together for a better tomorrow for the children and the children and the grandchildren that are not here yet. We always look forward, but not forgetting who we are, where we came from in the past, and tying them together for today, that things will be good for us. Pr Creator, protect all of our armed forces of all branches, for it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be what we are today. Take care of the ones in the hospital that they may get well and go home, even though during this trying time of COVID and other health disparities. We talk about education, Creator. Teach our children, bless them, that they may learn and become leaders in the future. Creator, we ask that you help, humbly help us with housing, housing everybody needs, that they have warmth, some place to call home, as we call this state of Colorado home and across this country. Creator, give us these opportunities through blessings for economic development, that we may grow, grow in a good way in partnerships, Creator. We can only have these things only through you, Creator. And the final thing, water. Water is life for everything and everywhere. So I say all these things, Creator, in your name. Bless each and every one here today and people that are watching and listening that they'll get this blessing in a good way, that they may take it to their hearts and their mind, that the road that they travel in life is just from here to here. It is not measured by miles but measured by how much love you have, how much respect, how much care, and everything that you have. Creator, thank you for all these things, and if I've forgotten anybody or anything, forgive me for that. Forgive me that things we have and the struggles and challenges, but I can't move forward without you, Creator, and we cannot move forward without you. So with that, Creator, I thank you. In your son's name, Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you. I now call upon the Chief Justice, Brian D. Boatwright, of the Colorado Supreme Court to administer the oaths of office. First, I call forward Secretary of State Jenna M. Griswold and Mario Cañedo.
you'll raise your right hand. I, Jenna Griswold, I, Jenna Griswold do swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Colorado. The Constitution of the State of Colorado. And the laws of the State of Colorado. And the laws of the State of Colorado. And will faithfully perform the duties. And will faithfully perform the duties of the Office of Secretary of State. Of the Office of Secretary of State. Upon which I am about to enter. Upon which I am about to enter. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I now call forward Treasurer Dave Young and Dr. Mary Young. I, David L. Young. I, David L. Young. Do swear. Do swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Colorado. The Constitution of the State of Colorado. And the laws of the State of Colorado. And the laws of the State of Colorado. And will faithfully perform the duties. And will faithfully perform the duties. Of the Office of State Treasurer of the Office of State Treasurer upon which I am about to enter upon which I am about to enter to the best of my ability to the best of my ability congratulations thank you Mr. Chief Justice I now call forward Attorney General Phil Weiser and Dr. Heidi Wald. Raise your right hand. I, Phil Weiser. I, Phil Weiser, swear by the ever living God, swear by the ever living God, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the State of Colorado, the Constitution of the State of Colorado, and the laws of the State of Colorado, and the laws of the State of Colorado, and will faithfully perform the duties, and will faithfully perform the duties of the Office of Attorney General of the Office of Attorney General, upon which I'm about to enter, upon which I'm about to enter, to the best of my ability, to the best of my ability. Congratulations. Congratulations. Congratulations to Attorney General Weiser, Treasurer Young, and Secretary of State Griswold. It is now my pleasure to welcome back the Denver Gay Men's Chorus, an out loud Colorado Springs men's chorus for a performance of Peace Like a River.
I now call forward best-selling poet, filmmaker, mother, and grandmother of governors and first gentlemen's children, Susan Polis Schutz, to read two poems. Hi, I just love the wind on this perfect day. We are one world with one heart, yet sometimes people disrespect and harm each other through destructive actions and words. We have to come together in peace and harmony. We thank our wonderful, loving son, Governor Polis, and his amazing team, who all work 24-7 to try to help everyone live an easier, more equitable and humane life. Also, as I look around, I want to thank all the security, the hundreds of security people who protect us. It's a, it's an honor to share two poems with you all on this special inauguration day. The first one is called, Nothing Should Divide Us. We who inherit the earth, who cheer the new moon peeking through the womb, who admire the green leaves of summer turning to lustrous reds and yellows, who watch them fall to the ground, cold, brown, and stiff. We who give birth to new life, who are exhilarated by the sun rising, who are romanced by the sun setting, who dream to the floating clouds. We who have a passing mark on the future of the world, we must have the same heart. We must have compassion for one another. We must have respect for one another. We must understand that though we have differences, we all want the same things. We all look up to the same sky, we cry the same tears. Nothing should divide us. The second poem is called Celebrate All That Binds Us. The budding, celebrate the budding flowers, the clear blue sky, the deep green forests, the twinkling stars. Celebrate the miracle of a baby, the laughter of adolescents, the responsibility of adults, and the wisdom of our elders. Celebrate the love in our hearts, the spirit in our souls, the health of our bodies. Celebrate all that binds us. Thank you. I call again upon the Chief Justice. Brian D. Boatwright of the Colorado Supreme Court to continue to administer the oaths of office. I now call forward Lieutenant Governor,
Diane Primavera and her daughters, Kelsey and Darcy Magnuson. Raise your right hand. I, Diane Primavera. I, Diane Primavera. Do swear. Do swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Colorado. The Constitution of the State of Colorado. And the laws of the State of Colorado. And the laws of the State of Colorado. And will faithfully perform the duties. And will faithfully perform the duties. Of the Office of Lieutenant Governor. Of the Office of Lieutenant Governor upon which I'm about to enter upon which I'm about to enter to the best of my ability to the best of my ability congratulations <laughs> I'm a little shorter than some. <laughs> it's nice to have a governor around. So, uh, Thank you so much, Colorado. It's so wonderful to be here with you all, participating in this time-honored state tradition, an important democratic tradition. All of us are so lucky to call Colorado home. And for Governor Polis and me, the opportunity to go to work and serve this amazing place is something that we wake up grateful for every single day. No matter who you voted for, I promise that we will do our very best to make you proud. That we will continue to work boldly and pragmatically to tackle the challenges that we face. And that we will value everyone's perspective from every corner of the state. That's the approach that's gotten us where we stand today. It's how we made good on Governor Polis' signature promise of making full day kindergarten free for every single Colorado family. And it's how we protected important freedoms like women's right to choose. It's how we came together. Yep, that's, that's worth clapping for. <laughs> it's how we came together to make it through the pandemic. And it's how we tackled the hard work of fixing the problems in our healthcare system, the problems that existed long before the pandemic. As some of you may know, healthcare is an issue near and dear to me. As a mom raising my two girls here in Colorado, I was dosed, diagnosed with can four different cancers, went through multiple rounds of treatment, and survived when people said I couldn't. That's not something you can go through without gaining a deep understanding of our nation's healthcare system and all the ways it makes it harder for patients. That experience is what motivated me to seek public office in the first place, and it's one of the reasons our administration has worked every day to lower drug costs, transform our behavioral health care system, and make affordable, high-quality care more accessible across our state. Colorado, we all know the job isn't done yet, not when it comes to health care, and not when it comes to lowering costs so every Colorado family can thrive. Governor Polis and I are getting right back to work, making more progress for the people of Colorado, building the bright future that all of our kids, including my two wonderful grandsons, and my granddaughter deserve. Let me tell you this about Governor Polis. He always, always puts Colorado first. I am so proud to work alongside him and the tens of thousands of outstanding state employees who work day in and day out to make Colorado an even more special place to call home. So thank you all for being here and God bless the state of Colorado.
I now call forward Governor Jared S. Polis and First Gentleman Marlon Reese. your right hand. I, Jared Polis. I, Jared Polis. Do affirm. Do affirm. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Colorado. The Constitution of the State of Colorado. And the laws of the State of Colorado. And the laws of the State of Colorado. And will faithfully perform the duties. And will faithfully perform the duties. Of the Office of Governor. Of the Office of Governor. Upon which I'm about to enter. Upon which I'm about to enter. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Congratulations, Governor. Can anybody still hear anything after that? Uh, I was tempted just to be going. Uh, thank you, Colorado. Uh, and for our first order of business, um, 
I'm going to be taking, as I did in my last inauguration, a, uh, a selfie, an inaugural selfie. So uh, as my dad would say, everybody, everybody look happy here. We're going to take a selfie. Okay. Cheer. And I have to get that out in real time before we resume, of course. Okay. Now. Uh, it is with uh, the deepest honor uh, that it really is truly the honor of my life to serve as governor these last four years. And it's with great gratitude, love for Colorado, that I accept the responsibility of leading our incredible, amazing state for the next four years. I want to begin by taking note of what an honor and a privilege it is, is for all of us to be here, uh, former governors of both parties, legislators, members of the public participating in this time-honored tradition. The peaceful continuation of power based on fair and democratic elections should never be taken for granted. It is what sustains our republic year after year, decade after decade, century after century. In Colorado's elections this last November, we saw people from all walks of life come together to affirm that democracy is worth voting for. And I'm so honored that people from across our state, from Garfield to Douglas, from Los Animas to Larimer, have spoken loud and clear that Colorado wants unity, not division. We want practical solutions. We want real results over partisan ideology. We want to move forward with a bright, positive vision for a shared future for everyone in a Colorado for all. You know, here in Colorado, we have our own unique way of doing things. We're bold, we're innovative, we're results driven. We strive to protect and expand our freedoms. And we choose to make our home here in this state because it's the best state in the country to live, raise a family, and build a great life. So let's continue to celebrate red and blue, Earl and Urban, urban, young and old, each and every one of us that helps make Colorado an even better place. Our mandate from the people of Colorado is to lead the Colorado way. And that's exactly what I intend to do as your governor for the next four years. It's not about our brand of politics, it's about solutions to real life challenges that Coloradans face and a passion that we share for making life better for all of us. Our call to action is to create opportunity for every Coloradan to live their best life, to make good on our, our vision of a Colorado for all where everyone can thrive. There's a Jewish proverb, he who invalidates another invalidates themselves. Our administration will never be about putting our fellow Coloradans down. We will always, always seek to lift people up, expanding freedom, opportunities, and love for one and all. Because no matter what part of Colorado you call home, no matter who you are, no matter who you love, no matter your race, your gender, how you worship, how you vote. At the end of the day, Colorado belongs to all of us and we will all help shape a better future for the great state of Colorado. When you travel around Colorado as often as Lieutenant Governor Diane Primavera and I, from Pueblo to Sterling, from Grand Junction to Fort Collins, you gain a special appreciation for the unique character and value of each community. When you listen to enough folks, you realize that in many ways, people across our state are asking for some of the same things in different ways. Practical solutions to the rising cost of living in every corner of our state, safe communities, good schools, affordable access to health care, the opportunity to build a great life for yourself and your family, and the freedom to forge your own path without the government telling you how to live your life. I don't think I'd be standing before you today 
if we hadn't shown some real progress on delivering on different parts of this vision that we share in my first term. For me, this job is about the opportunity to improve the lives of all Coloradans. And I'm proud to say we've gotten a lot done. Free full day kindergarten and preschool starting this fall. Lowering the cost of prescription drugs. More work ahead. Protecting our blue skies, our public lands, and our water. And of course, defending Coloradans' most fundamental freedoms. Throughout my first term, we've crossed some big items off of our to-do list, but that doesn't mean the list in front of us today is any shorter than it was when I took office four years ago. Because with each challenge comes new opportunities. As Colorado approaches our 150th anniversary as a state, we ask ourselves the question, who do we want to be when we're 150 years old? And for many people in our state, life is too hard and too expensive. Coloradans are counting on us. Men and women in public service, local elected officials, the men and women who work behind us in this building to deliver real solutions to save people money. And of course, to realize the full potential of our great state, we just make sure we take the very best ideas wherever they come from, from the left, from the right, from the center, uh, from up, from down, <laughs> to move our state forward. And we must move forward together so that no one and no part of our state gets left behind. Together, we're going to reduce housing costs across Colorado with options for every budget to afford to live in communities where people work and want to live. And that means, quite simply, creating more housing in Colorado, managing for an increasingly scarce water supply, making progress towards our clean air and climate goals while protecting our natural treasures. We're going to continue on our bold path towards making Colorado 100% powered by renewable energy by 2040, powered by good paying jobs, lowering rates for consumers, improving reliability, and doing our part to ensure that future generations of Coloradans inhabit a livable planet. And we're very excited about implementing free preschool for every family that wants it this coming fall. It's one less thing to worry about for parents of four-year-olds, thousands of dollars to get their kids off to a strong start. We're going to tackle crime head on. Yes, by holding criminals accountable, but also by preventing crime before it happens to make our neighborhood safer. No Coloradan should have to fear for their safety on the streets where they live, in the places where they work and play, in the schools where our kids go to learn and to dream big dreams. And we're going to keep using every tool we have to help save Coloradans money. That means lower taxes, lower transportation costs, lower medical bills, lower business fees, and of course, lower housing costs. Anything we can do, we must do when it comes to helping you hold on to more of your hard-earned money. I am so grateful to the people of Colorado. I'm grateful to be surrounded by an incredible and dedicated team, including members of our cabinet behind me. We are ready to take on these challenges. From my outstanding departing Chief of Staff, Lisa Kaufman, To our timeless crisis response teams, fires, pandemics, floods, to the folks who work every day to keep the lights on, the water running, the roads clear and safe, our people of Colorado couldn't have gotten through everything we faced these last four years without the extraordinary, your extraordinary work. To each and every one of you, thank you for everything you do for Colorado. And of course, a huge thank you to our dedicated Lieutenant Governor, Diane Primavera. No one knows more about health care and how to, the importance of saving people money on health care than Diane, and I'm so grateful to have her by my side. So too, I am so thankful to serve alongside our Attorney General, Phil Weiser, 
our Secretary of State, Jenna Griswold, and Treasurer Dave Young. Dave, let me, you have to give me a ride in that pickup truck sometime. And we share a very powerful vision of a Colorado for all. That's an honor to serve. I want to thank my colleagues in the State Assembly. Many of you are here, uh, including the current speaker and president, President Fenberg, Speaker McCluskey, as well as the former speaker and our new visionary chief of staff, Alec Garnett. For our cabinet, for our team, for the legislature, the progress we've made these last four years would not have been possible without your hard work. And I can't wait to get even more good work done with you. And finally, thank you to my family, my parents, Dr. Stephen Schutz, and you heard from the poet, Susan Polis Schutz. Our daughter, Cora, is also a really good poet. My sister, my brother, uh, my husband, Marlon, our amazing kids, you inspire me and support me every day. Uh, and thank you uh, for helping to allow me to work so hard to make this place we call home an even more amazing place. Look, nothing about the task in front of us would be easy. If it were, it would have been done already. But here in Colorado, we don't ask for easy. When our daughter does a green or a blue, she says, bring on a black or a double black. In Colorado, we scale mountains. We bridge divides. We break barriers. With joy in our hearts, we take on the toughest battles. And when they're won, we ask, what's next? Nobody could have predicted all that the last four years would bring, the trials, the tribulations, the challenges. Nor could anybody say with certainty what the next four years will bring. But I can assure you that as your governor, I will always promise you that whatever comes our way, we will face it together with resourcefulness, with innovation, with grit, and with a powerful, positive vision. We will protect our freedom, our Colorado way of life, and together we'll build a Colorado for all, secure in the knowledge that our best days as a state and as a nation are still ahead, and we will work to build a future that will make all of us proud. And of course, there's no time to waste, so our work begins now. Thank you so much. God bless Colorado, and God bless the United States of America. Distinguished guests, please welcome Rabbi Dr. Tirza Firestone of Congregation Neve Kodesh, who will deliver an invocation. What a privilege it is to be here to seal this very, very moving ceremony today. Please take a seat. With our blood and breath pumping, feeling the promise of this threshold day, I invite you to join me in a simple and brief prayer to bless Colorado's governor and magnificent team of leaders to raise their words and pledges as high as this gorgeous, clear, blue Colorado sky. Let the words they speak today be more than words, but carriers of our common quest, transformers of our shared dreams to, li to live dignified lives, raise educated and happy children, to go farther, to do better, to break open the hard shells of our lesser selves and become our best selves. At this liminal moment, as our leaders are launched, let us invoke our ancestors, the forebears of all the lineages, colors, and creeds of this great state, from the great elders of Colorado's original peoples to all who have come since, 
to partake in and add to this state's beauty and goodness. And let us invoke the spirit of life, that which is called by a thousand names, the life force that flows within, among, and beyond all creatures. We ask you, creator, humbly to protect our governor from enmity, to guard our wise leaders and their families from misguided hatred. We ask that you embolden them and with ample chutzpah to maintain their visionary insight and strategic wisdom in this era of wildfires and floods, droughts, and mass shootings, to take courageous action so that our state of Colorado can lead the nation in policies that are both humane and germane to the needs and protection of all Coloradans alike. And we ask you, great spirit, that their determination to stay fresh and unsullied by the cynicism of the day, that their vision stay bold and their hearts wide enough to envelop every Coloradan in the mantle of justice, equality, and promise. In the name of all that is great within us and all that is greater than us, I seal this prayer now with an ancient blessing from the Jewish tradition that has always been conferred upon the highest leaders of the land. And I'm going to ask you, Governor, please stand. And I will speak it in its native language, Hebrew, and then, and then translate. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam shenatan michvodo lebasar vadam. Blessed are you, source of life, sovereign of this universe, who has given from your glory to these human leaders, this governor, this cabinet, this staff. Yivarechacha Adonai v'yishmrecha, ya'er Adonai panav elecha v'yechineka, yisa Adonai panav elecha v'yasem lecha shalom. May God bless and protect you, governor, cabinet, staff, all of you, leaders of this state. May God shine her light upon you and grace you with wisdom every day. May God lift you up and keep you, your families, and all of us in the light of peace from this day forward. And let us say together, amen. Amen. Thank you. What a beautiful and wonderful celebration to kickstart the next four years, and how wonderful to do it together. When the pomp and circumstance is over, and the parties have ended, many of us will still be right here, ready to roll up our sleeves and get back to work doing the people's business. I look forward to working hand in hand with Coloradans from every corner of the state with our esteemed governor, because all of us know how incredibly lucky we are to call Colorado home, and we all have a vested interest in bettering our state. I know I speak for so many of my colleagues when I convey my pride in all that we have accomplished for Colorado over the past four years. And yet, with our plans this session, and for the next four years, Colorado's best days lie ahead. Our bright future is on its way. And it thanks, it, it's thanks to the hard work of so many here today, and a huge part of it is thanks to the leadership of Governor Polis. But most of all, it is thanks to the people of Colorado, who put their trust in leaders that work hard every single day to build a more prosperous Colorado for all. We've got a lot of work ahead of us, but first, we've got a whole lot of more celebrating to do. I'll see you all at the Blue Sneaker Ball for all tonight. Thank you, Colorado. I now call forth the Legislative Escort Committees for the Honorable Governor Jared S. Polis and Lieutenant Governor Diane Primavera to come forth to escort the Governor and Lieutenant Governor into the Capitol for the receiving line. No vote. Distinguished guests, please welcome back Terrell Martin and the C2 Mass Choir.
behalf of Governor Jared Polis and the citizens of the great state of Colorado, we thank you for attending the 2023 inauguration ceremony of Colorado's 43rd governor and wish you a great Colorado day. At this time, we ask that you remain seated while we release participants by row. Yeah.